Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Ali Al-Lawati. Um, I'm a doctor from Oman and I specialize in internal medicine. Um, I'm immensely excited to be on the ADAPT Live for this week. I'd really like to thank Glenn and Yale Finkel for inviting me to do this. So just to add a little about myself, I am a type 1 diabetic. I was diagnosed at the age of 7 and started following a low carb diet um, when I was 16 years old. So let's get into our topic for the day, which is proteins. So why proteins? Um, up to 15% of, of our body mass is actually made up of proteins. And, and when we think about proteins, we usually think about muscles, but it's way beyond just that. Um, you've got the bones, the skin, the ligaments, the blood, every single living cell, even hormones and, and enzymes that control chemical reactions. So metabolism is actually a set of chemical reactions that are run or controlled by enzymes. So proteins are very, very important. So why eat more? Um, so one of, of the answers to this question, or, or what I explain to my patients, is that I ask them to go back in time, like way, way back to, let's say, the Stone Age. Um, what did people eat back then? How, how did people survive? So the answer to this is that people ate mostly meat. Um, they were hunters and they would hunt the prey and they'd eat them. So, so mostly meat and fat. And only seasonally they'd get um, fruits and vegetables. So they'd mostly depend on proteins. Um, so now when we talk about proteins and fats, we're talking about macronutrients. So on a low carb diet, we usually eat more fat and proteins and less of carbs. So there are actually scientists that argue that perhaps back then, um, carbohydrates were not a macronutrient, but, but a micronutrient. And it's very interesting to read about that. Um, so when, when we look at it from a nutritionist or dietitian's or even a biochemist's point of view, um, we, we look or, or we see that, that there are essential amino acids and essential fatty acids, but no essential carbs. And, and when we talk about amino acids, um, we, we say that there are nine essential amino acids. So what does essential mean really? So essential means that the body cannot synthesize this on its own and it needs to take this or get it or acquire it um, through the diet. So we can't make these amino acids and you have to take them or, or consume them through our, through our diet. And so going back to the point is that there's no essential carbohydrate, but we have essential amino acids and essential fats. So our food should depend on these. So now when we talk about proteins, we, we look at sources of proteins and, and there are people who argue that oh, animal proteins are better or, or plant proteins are better. So when we compare them, you see that animal proteins are actually superior to, to plant-based um, proteins. So when we talk about animal-based proteins, we, we're talking about meat, fish, poultry and eggs. Actually, eggs are said to be one of the best quality of proteins available in nature. And they actually contain all the essential amino acids in, in one egg. And it's interesting that, that I, I usually advise my patients to have a lot of eggs. And eggs are quite cheap, so, so you can actually incorporate them in, in your diet. So, in fact, an egg is so complete that actually a living thing comes out of it. it it's got all the nutrients required for life. So, but when I tell my patients to eat eggs, they get scared and, and they think, oh, cholesterol, you know, everybody says, don't eat the egg yolk, you, you, your cholesterol will just shoot up. So recent studies, a, a lot of research has actually put into this, um, a lot of studies were done on this and collectively they've agreed that the effect of, of egg consumption on, on blood cholesterol can actually be divided into two. Um, we call those whose cholesterol remains the same when they c consume eggs, we call them hyporesponders. And the other group whose cholesterol actually increases um, after consuming eggs are called hyperresponders. 
So the studies tell us that 75% of population are actually hyporesponders. So no matter how many eggs they eat, their cholesterol does not increase. And only 25% of the people that, that consume eggs, let's say five eggs a day, their cholesterol might increase. But these studies also showed that these hyperresponders whose cholesterol levels increase, it, they, they found that the quality of their cholesterol actually improved, making it less harmful. So all in all, it's a win. And, and actually, in, in 2015, the Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee in the United States lifted the ban on cholesterol and stated, I, I quote, a cholesterol is not considered a nutrient of concern for overconsumption. So there you go. Cholesterol is safe. So have more cholesterol, have more eggs. Um, okay, so when we come to proteins, which proteins should you consume? We, we mentioned um, chicken, fish, uh, meat and eggs, but what about for vegetarians? So different types of vegetarians. You've got the lacto over vegetarians who can consume whey protein and eggs. And for, for the over vegetarians, eggs are good. Uh, for the vegetarians, the strict vegetarians, we might um, advise for mushrooms or so soy proteins. So how much protein should you consume? Um, on a low carb diet, we usually don't restrict proteins and it's it's interesting that the hormonal changes um, change the um, appetite or control your appetite so your body actually tells you when it requires food um, and so you know you can eat as much proteins as you want um, but if you look at the requirements or if you read studies or, or you ask um, uh, experts, they tell you that the requirement depends on activity and they'd say on average um, for a sedentary person the protein requirement is up to 0.8 grams per kg per day and it then depends on, on, on your level of activity so the more active you are um, like for an athlete the more protein you'd require um, actually, the American College of Sports Medicine recommends 1.2 to 2 grams per kg per day of proteins, of course, depending on your activity. So it's directly proportional. So on a low-carb diet, as we said, we don't restrict proteins, um, but, but with restricting carbohydrates, your insulin reduces, ketones increase, and then um, if you eat a lot of proteins, there are some appetite suppressing hormones that increase and for instance like uh, CCK called cysteinin and this will reduce appetite and make you eat the amount that you require and um, if if you decide to actually fast the entire day and not eat anything then I'd advise that you have some protein to maintain your your nitrogen balance um, so someone mentioned that excess protein if over it was overeaten turns into glucose in the system so it is true that there are some amino acids so proteins are actually composed of amino acids um, chains of amino acids make up proteins and some amino acids uh, can actually be converted into glucose through gluconeogenesis and but mostly I would say um, proteins are weight neutral so they don't usually cause weight gain if you use them right um, but for a type 1 diabetic, let's say, if they eat a lot of proteins, they might require some insulin. So on an average, when I teach my patients to eat and calculate their insulin requirements, I'd say that 6 ounces of protein more or less require 1 unit of insulin based according to your body size. So one other issue that comes up when I mention proteins to my patients or to anyone really, even health professionals, is the effect on kidneys. So people have been told for all these years that if you eat more proteins, it's bad for your kidneys. So there's actually no study or no evidence um, to suggest that increased consumption of proteins affects kidneys or kidney function um, or the liver for that matter in a um, fit person, in a healthy person. Um, and even when the kidneys have been affected uh, through some disease or disorder, it's still very controversial about the effect of um, uh, the proteins on um, the kidneys and or the liver. So recently, um, they've actually been 
we've been teaching patients with liver disease that they shouldn't eat a lot of proteins because um, it, it affects them. But recently, um, the guidelines have changed and we we're actually advising people with chronic liver disease to have more protein. So um, that's it for my talks for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, again, I'd like to thank um, Glenn and Yale for this opportunity to talk to you guys. Um, if you have any questions, any, if, if you want to reach out, um, you can go to my profile or you can send me an email. Uh, my email address is a.lawati, that's L-A-W-A-T-I at yahoo.com. And um, it was lovely chatting with you. And again, this is Dr. Ali El Lawati from Oman. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Goodbye.